Good morning. It's born at West Coast Bell Pottery in La Hague, Nova Scotia. Um, Vevor have sent me a, another wheel. So, um, thank you, Vevor. So, this is the manufacturer of the wheel. Uh, it's Vevor. Um, this is the third wheel I've reviewed for them. Every one of them worked fine. Um, and uh, so, there you go. So it comes packed pretty decently by UPS. Good solid packing. Instruction manual. can't beat this, a free tool kit with an apron by the look of it. And then it looks like, uh, let's see, let's put that on there. Really solid cardboard and a plastic pack, uh, splash pan. Get it up. I can take this out, it'll be easier to get it out of the box. Wow, that's really solid, thick cardboard corrugated for packing. I should be using that myself. Okay, so we have a wheel. How heavy is it? Let the box fall out. Okay. So we have a nice solid switch on here. And then you've got an off switch on there. An on switch. I'll plug it in and see how it works. The same foot pedal as on the other wheels. I think they use these for sewing machines. But I had no problem with the other two, so... Splash band is a little thinner, I think. Uh, this is a lower end wheel. Um, uh, looks like it comes out really easy. Um, yeah, it's a good paint job with a frame. Um, can't really feel how thick it is. This one is covered up on the underside, which is better than the other wheel. Let's have a look. I remember you could see the belt going around on the other wheel. Oh, yeah, yeah. So this one, in actual fact, seems like it's built a little better. And it's a small wheel for children. So, um, uh, it's got... So it's got a touchpad. Um, I assume when you're using that, you'll have to wipe your finger off if you're pressing the buttons. Um, but let's uh, plug it in and see how it goes. I went looking for an extension cable. First I found that and I thought, no, I don't want to use one of those. Two prong, um, and you're working with something that has water involved. Should not use anything like this. It should be a three outlet like this one okay so make sure you get a good grounded outlet the uh, extension cable that you're going to use okay i plugged it in um you've got a safety switch on the actual cable that plugs to the wall uh for turning it on and off um and so that's nice because you can separate even if it's plugged in you can separate the power from the unit i'm going to show you turned off that's a switch on the black cable that came with it Push it back on. Now the power goes to the unit. It's a touch pad. That's nice, but I'm wondering if your hand's got clay on it, what happens? So you're going to end up um, having to wipe your finger off every time you touch the touch pad. But you turn it on. You have choices of reverse uh, or forward or reverse. And uh, some wheels in the past never had that. So that's also. Uh, everybody takes it for granted now, but, you know, my wheels in the old days never had that. Um, 
in uh, hand adjustment or foot pedal. So this will turn on the hand adjustment so you can raise the speed or lower the speed with a plus and a minus number there. Um, and uh, you've got this one that just makes it go. So is that foot pedal or is it? That's the foot pedal one. So when it's got a red light lip, you're using the foot pedal. And um, let's see. Full speed, that's very fast. Foot pedal is easy enough with my fingers to move. Slowing it down. And it gives you the readout of the speed there. That's nice, but you're not gonna be able to see that when you're sitting on top of the wheel. Maybe the teacher can see that in the, in the classroom. She's teaching a child how to throw, 65s. And then it turns off at 60, which means you can't get below one revolution per second. Yep. That's slow, but I like to turn my wheel even slower than that when I'm throwing very delicate pieces. So, but one revolution per second is, um, the slowest you can get this one to get, and then it turns off. Okay, let's try it with the, now we go for the, uh, just using the touchpad, which I don't think will be useful because your hands have got clay on them, but. Yep, the first speed is 60, so one revolution per second. Um, so that's, that's the slowest it will go. Um, goes up in five rev Solutions and keeps going up. Keep it going, see what's the fastest. Wow, 320 revolutions per minute. That's fast. Now, it's gonna burn me, but I can't stop it. Okay, so that's good. Let's make it slower. Can I change it in mid? If I change it to foot, well, it's in the middle of there, it stops it altogether. Um, so, um, so you've got to choose foot or hand. I would always use the foot pedal, um, but um, your hands are going to have clay on them, so I'm not sure. Keep your hands off here as much as possible, yes? And then you've got your reverse. So now it should go in the reverse. Are we on foot pedal? Yeah, now it's going reverse, and that's how they throw in Japan. No, that is, which speed, of, which one are we doing here? Hard to see. Oh, that's that's how we throw here. Okay, so this is actually anti-clockwise. Um, and then we'll stop it. Now we should be throwing as they do in Japan. Clockwise, yep, yep. So you've got two choices. So that's nice. So the touchpad works great. I don't know how it's gonna work when you've got clay on your fingers. You might have to keep a cloth with you so you can wipe your fingers as you're using it. Or I would take a piece of um, just very clear cling film and stick that over there. Um, you can take the cling film to here and have it hanging down, you know, saran wrap basically. Uh, and then you won't have to get, you can keep this clean, just have your saran wrap over the top. Uh, my guess is it will still work, so let me try that. Okay, I just put some saran wrap cling film over here. So let's see what happens. Touch pad, I think we've got a foot pedal at the moment. Yep, we do. Stop it, go over, yep, it recognized my finger. Uh, now it should be just touch pad. Yep. So every, just put a piece of saran wrap over that, that'll keep it clean. I didn't even tape it down, I was going to, but I guess the saran wrap just sticks anyway. They probably put some tape, um, you know, they, they always faithful duct tape and just Tape it on there if you want to, and that will hold it, and then you can stop it. So saran wrap over that. That's the first advice I would give you, because your hands are gonna get clay. Now, splash pan. This is a lighter duty, this is a lighter duty splash pan than the one that comes with the other ones. But it goes together really easy, so that's a great, Thing. So some splash fans are so hard you have to really fiddle around with them to get them on there, but that's easy. Um, and the, the instruction manual, manual it comes with, you get and a whole bunch of trimming tools that come with it as well. So uh, look, that's a nice extra. And then you get all this tool pack here, which is standard. This is the stuff you always get from craft stores. 
Um, you pay about $15 for this, I think $20 in a craft store. Uh, and you get this apron, which is, you know, just a nice plastic little apron, you know, that you can buy disposable aprons. Um, so that's not a biggie, but the, tr the tools are a biggie to get. Uh, you need all of those. Um, so, um, so next we just have to try throwing a pot on it. This is a table model too. Uh, I wouldn't sit on this onto the floor. I would keep this sitting on the table um, and um, you need a little pot of water to go with it um, and, uh, and you're away. Oh, you need some clay. <laughs> All right. Okay, so we are going to throw a mug on this wheel. The wheel head is small, so my bats won't fit on this. Um, but that doesn't matter, we can throw right on the wheel head, so, um, so I got my, I'm not going to use the tools that they gave me because I'm going to save those for the school that's going to get it. So if you're ever throwing on any surface, you dampen the wheel head first, and then you knock it down, um, sealing it to the wheel head. Um, so then I'm going to, I've put some saran wrap over the actual uh, foot pedal so I don't dirty that while I'm throwing, but let's see if we can get it just going. Is that going? That's the wrong way around. Let's try the other way around. No, that's the wrong one there. We want to go that one. So now I should throw the right way around. Yep. So let's keep it going like that for now. The saran wrap sticking to my hand. Okay, so we've got a little sponge, wet the pot, wet my hands. Okay, so I could do with the wheel going a bit faster. Let's try that. That's better. So I'm not stopping the wheel head. Let's get it go full speed. This is what we call full speed. Not slowing the wheel head at all. Just washing it flat, lifting it up. So no problem centering. This is about one and a quarter pounds of clay. I'm not used to throwing standing up, so this is new for me as well. So center it. Put a little hole in the center, pull it out, see it's going pretty fast at this point, this is faster than I would have it going at that point. So if you were sitting on the, uh, with this wheel on the floor, my foot was on the foot pedal, I'd slow the wheel down at this point. So let's just get my wheel going slower, because I'm doing it like a tabletop there. There you go, we've got it slowed down. No problem. This wheel is very... I don't feel anything irregular about it at the moment. Now I feel like I've got to slow it down again. So as a tabletop, where I'm using my, instead of my foot, I'm using my hand, I have to release the piece. Now we've got it going, how many revolutions is that? 110. So I can get quite a bit slower than that. But let's keep it there for a bit. Yeah, so that feels right. It's about 100, and it's nice for me to see how many revolutions I'm throwing at. I've never done that before. Well, you've seen my videos before, I always do this in the bottom. I don't have my metal rig with me, but I use the wooden one. Not bad. I haven't felt, felt anything. I don't know what I would expect. I mean, it's a new wheel. Um, it should work perfectly, and it does. There we 
to get, I don't have a sponge on a stick off on me, so I'm just going to get the sponge to suck up the water. Get a bit more down there. So that looks pretty good. Regular mug. Okay, how much slow can we get this? I'm using my hand. That was 60, I bet. What have we got going now? 60, yep. I didn't notice much difference there. So I'm used to throwing slower than that on a bigger wheel. But it's not flying out. That's a, a speed that I think you could work with. But if you had a wobbly pot going that fast, you'd want to slow the wheel down a bit more. So when a, for a beginner, I think it'd be nice if you had a slightly slower speed than that. But as a potter that can throw on a wheel, this is perfectly adequate. Um, but for somebody learning how to throw, that's fairly fast going around if you had a little wobble with your pot. It would be kind of hard to control. So what I'm guessing is I'd probably throw in about 30 revolutions a minute if I've got something that I'm really trying to get under control. But there you go, that's one. And then you stop the wheel and we take it off the wheel. Okay, I got myself a board. Put a little water on the wheel head. The clay I'm using to play with is B-Mix. Now when I'm throwing, I throw without the splash pan on, uh, on the back, so I can lift the pots off easier. So when I'm doing it this way, with the splash pan, I've just got to edge it up a little bit carefully. But that's no problem. So. That was about one and a quarter pounds, I think, probably of clay. I've got a little bit of clay left on there. This one is one and three quarter pounds of clay, which I consider, if you're teaching in a school, this piece of clay, this size, is a lot of clay for a child to center. So I would say in a school setting that you really should be throwing pieces of clay that are a pound and under. <laughs> Because it's hard to center a big piece of clay like this. Um, muscle. After 11 years old, for a child, you start to develop a little muscle. Um, but um, there you go, with it. And I'm throwing it at a fairly low speed at the moment. What have we got? 130. Let's go up a bit. For centering, you need a bit faster. Should be wetting my hand, shouldn't it? Yep, I'm squashing down. I can't stop this wheel. So I don't think you're going to have any issues about power with this wheel. It says it's a 350 watt motor. Schools are not Schools don't have unlimited funds, so obviously costs of stuff is important to a school. So, uh, and I think this wheel sells for 200 and some odd dollars, so that's not much money. You could have a little bake sale and buy a wheel. Now, I'm going to make a ball this time. So at this point, I don't want it to get fast, I want the wheel to be going slow. Remember you don't want a flat bottom for a ball, you should have a gentle curve in the bottom of a ball. And then 
This is where I think the revolutions are going to be important because when you throw a ball, it starts to flare out naturally from centrifugal force. So what have we got now? 115, I want to go down to the, the lowest, 60. There you go. So that's the slowest I can get this wheel to go. I think that this wheel would be useful in many situations. If you had a pottery studio that just a potter just had one wheel, this would be a useful wheel to have as a trimming wheel. You can even have it as a decorating wheel, I suppose. If you were doing some banding with under, under glazes or stains or oxides. Remember, this is the slowest this wheel is going, so I'm trying to now take it out and see whether we can get a flared ball without it collapsing. Because that's still what I consider fairly fast for doing a ball. I'm just gonna dry my hands off. Let's get the water out of the bowl. Because I want to lower, lower this down quite a bit. Using the metal rib, though you, you've seen me use all the time, you can correct a wobble with a metal rib, even when it's quite severe. Buying my first wheel back in 1983, I think it was, um, was a stretch, a real stretch to be able to afford one. You know, I was right out of college, couldn't, you know, had no savings. And what I like about these Vevel wheels is that uh, somebody who can get in, into making pottery who's very enthusiastic and, you know, gung-ho for something unexpected. They're just not, don't have the dexterity, you know, physical strength. There's a lot of reasons somebody will start making pottery and then give up. Um, and so you don't have a huge investment in buying a potter's wheel. So still going, it's not falling over. I'm taking it out a long way. Let's go, with, let's really push the limit. Yeah, that's what I would get on my own wheel. So at that speed, it's not a big deal. And all that, so I thought maybe they it would be a bit too fast, but it works fine. If there was a wobble in this, if you're a beginner and you have an off-center piece of clay, um, this will help teach you how to throw better and throw on center because a wobble at this speed would take it off. It would actually make it collapse. So you'll have to learn how to center really well. And that's what you should do anyway. So um, now this one is what I would normally have on a bat. Uh, and you can actually um, just lift the bat off. Um, let's just turn it up a little bit more. I don't wanna get this. 70 down to 60. I want to put a little groove in the bottom so the wire goes under easier. That's what the rubber rib is for, the wooden rib is for. So you can have, you know, a little bit of a try at throwing on a wheel um, and hopefully you're very successful. But if you aren't, you could probably sell this wheel for almost as much as you paid for it anyway, if not the same. The price of wheels has gone up a lot in the last several years. I think since COVID happened, the price of wheels have gone up a lot. And then you've got to get it off, which bends it like crazy. There you go. I have a pop.
on a wheel that was 200 and some odd dollars. Um, I'll post the link in the video. Um, but I, I'd say this wheel would not disappoint if you spent that much money on it and you got this wheel. If you've got a child who wants to learn how to throw, it's a great Christmas present, a great hobby uh, for somebody, uh, you know, and um, put it in the basement or the garage and, and you're going to have a lot of mopping to do because I made a lot of mess in my studio. <laughs> Clay is always messy, but it's fun and all that. So um, anyway, I hope you can uh, uh, think about buying one of these wheels if you need a little you know, gift for your child. And, and if I'm lucky now, I'm going to find a child locally who would like to try throwing on this wheel.